Guys, we've all experienced a power outage before. Now, is there anything worse than this in the sense of just feeling totally helpless like you don't know what to do with yourself? I mean, no light, no TV, no Wi-Fi. You can't even open the refrigerator. You can't use your phone charger, so you just have what you have with your phone until it dies. Everything stops. It's terrible. The good news is, though, excluding major events like storms, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, wildfires. The average citizen of the U.S. experiences only two hours of power outages per year. This is the case for the last 10 years. That's pretty sick. We're in a great situation compared to the majority of the world. But I have bad news. This is going to be kind of like the show Scared Straight. Our power grid, the most important thing probably in our country, you know, because energy is the economy. Don't forget that. Don't ever forget that. Our power grid was built in the 1960s and the 1970s. Currently over 70% of it is more than 25 years old. That's according to the White House. I mean, not the, that the White House is super reliable. So what are some of the main vulnerabilities to the power grid? You know, obviously extreme weather, but in the past 23 years, major power outages from weather-related events have increased by 67%. You know, and now all the climate crazy people will probably be like, oh, climate change, blah, blah, blah. But maybe it's because of our dog shit power grid that the government hasn't put any money into in the past 50 years. I mean, they put plenty of money into stupid things like welfare and medicaid fraud and getting just pounded on government contractors overcharging them idiots but cybersecurity that's that's the real thing to be worried about when it comes to the power grid because get this price of the this threat assessment from the department of homeland security says that china has the capability and probably intent to compromise the energy grid Great. In 2021, the threat assessment from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence said that Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea, they all have the capabilities and the intent to take out our power. Guys, we're heading for absolute chaos. Listen to this. So 40% of the world's food programs of wheat supplies comes from Ukraine. Russia and Ukraine account for 29% of wheat exports. And now Russia's blocking Ukraine from exporting food. Now here's a list of countries that are all stopping their food exports. Argentina, Algeria, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Iran. Kazakhstan, Kosovo, Turkey, Ukraine, Russia, Serbia, Tunisia, and Kuwait. That's why getting survival food is more important than ever. Now you can create your own stockpile of the best-selling four Patriot survival kits, and it's not ordinary food. We're talking 25 years of super survival food that's good for. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners, and you can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. Four Patriot survival offers more than just food. They also offer state-of-the-art generators, portable refrigerators that you don't have to plug in, solar cell phone chargers, solar flashlights, EMP shields, and much more. It's crazy. And now listeners of the Brandon Cito show can get a 10% discount on their first order of 4patriots.com by using promo code Let's Go Brandon. Click the link in the description or go to 4patriots.com and use code Let's Go Brandon to start your stockpile today. Great. Great. Then in 2021, Jennifer Granholm She's a really unpleasant person to listen to. She said that America's adversaries possess the threat to shut down the power grid. So you've got power flow and security, energy secretary, and the director of national intelligence all saying this. I mean, government spits out a lot of propaganda, but I happen to believe in this situation because of how inadequate our power grid is. So one of the main reasons that the power grid is so out of whack today so vulnerable is because it currently allows remote access to the networks you ever hear people say don't put a camera in your house because some shithead teenager can hack into it and just watch everything you're doing i mean that's literally the case for our power grid believe it or not somebody can just hack into our power grid remotely and screw it all up according to the government accountability office the department of energy strategy does not include a complete assessment of the cybersecurity risks to the grid I mean, that sounds like a pretty government thing to do, but are you shitting me? They're the most important thing, the biggest legit threat. The Department of Energy Strategy doesn't have a threat assessment for that. Then you have FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They don't have a good understanding of the scale of the potential impacts from the attacks, according to the Office of Government Accountability. So the two most important government agencies around the concept of the power grid being compromised have no idea about the consequences or don't have a threat assessment for how it would go down. It's on the long list of things that are just unacceptable by the government. In 2022, the U.S. electric grid was attacked 107 times. And in the past few years, things like banks, casinos, government agencies, 
all fallen victim to cyber attacks. And the crazy thing is that all these networks are much more secure than our power grid. There's virtually no serious security to our power grid from a cyber standpoint. What would happen if the power grid went down? I mean, everything bad that you could imagine would happen if the power grid went down. And if it was a serious attack, it would go down for three to six months at least. And that's depending on which parts would have to be replaced. It could be up to a year in certain situations. So things like traffic lights, public transportation, businesses, hospitals, communication networks, all that stuff, boom, gone. The water supply, a lot of water supply systems are relying on electric pumps. Now, without that, obviously, you're gonna have dirty, gross water that's probably gonna have diseases in it. And unless you have one of those cool products that filters the water for you. But a lot of people laugh at people like that who do the prepping type of stuff to be ready for these type of situations. Think about what happens if traffic lights go down if we don't have street lights. You can't really drive anywhere. I mean, you think people are gonna be considerate enough to be at four-way intersections without traffic lights and just let each other go in a coherent, cohesive way? Hell no. Are you kidding me? We don't even do that with traffic lights. We're not gonna do that without traffic lights. So just consider just traffic itself inoperable. And then fuel stations probably won't even have enough gas to pump after a while. So think about that. If you're in a place that's too hot or too cold, like Arizona being 100 degrees every day during the summer, Minnesota being in the single digits every day during the winter, you're pretty much stuck there if you get caught off guard by this. And then what, you're, and then what, you're just going to survive in that, those conditions for a couple of months until we fix this? I think a shit ton of people will die if this happened. Then communication networks, I mean, cell towers, they have backup generators, but they don't get fuel after a while, then they're not going to be able to run on the backup generators. And now, obviously, this would mean that you don't have a cell phone or a computer anymore, don't have Wi-Fi, can't communicate. So transportation and communication, boom, gone. Then healthcare. You know, hospitals also have backup generators, but same situation. This isn't a three month long solution. So anybody who's dependent on electrically powered medical devices, boom, they're gone. Now, potentially the worst of it all. So the food supply, we have what's called a just in time supply chain. Now, you know, a, lot, a long time ago, manufacturers realized that's not cost efficient to store things in warehouses for long periods of time. So literally everything you see at the store is getting there just in time and gonna be gone the next day with more stuff replacing it the next day. It's a crazy system. You know, you saw how delicate it was during COVID a bit, and especially with stupid things like toilet paper, just probably because it was a social media trend. Somebody posted one empty shelf with to uh, no toilet paper there, so everybody just flooded to the stores and started cleaning it out. Now imagine if that shit happened with food. How much scarier is it to the, the notion of not having food versus not having toilet paper? It'd be fucking Armageddon. This would obviously lead to a situation where people are just running around killing each other, stealing things, Emergency response is overwhelmed. I mean, you know, they're going to be doing a million things, right? Look at what happened with Hurricane Katrina. You know, it was like the Wild West for a couple months. I mean, I don't know what kind of long-term impact this would have on society, but people will definitely be mind-fucked if whoever the survivors are. So you know what really pisses me off about this is that we spend about, say, $900 billion every year on the military. We spend around $500 billion a year on things like Medicaid, Medicare. We spend around... Oh, what, like a hundred billion on welfare? So we do all of that, but they don't spend any billions on the energy grid, on the power grid. Freaking Biden and Harris acted like it was a big deal that they spent 13 billion out of the giant trillion dollar package they put forward a few years ago on energy. I've heard people say that it would only take like 50 billion for a year for a couple of years to get the power grid up to standard in a way where it's not penetrable and not compromisable. What's the point of having the strongest military in the world if we don't have a power grid that's safe from cyber attacks from countries that are much weaker than us? It's ridiculous. We'd rather buy 10,000 Black Hawk helicopters that we aren't even going to use than secure our power grid. You know, but that's, uh, that's a rant for another day. So if you enjoyed this video, if you think I made solid points, definitely subscribe. Check out this playlist right here. And if you want to create your own content, connect with me on Manect. See you later.